Hello everyone, back to into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week's 10 days for today's second video. We're also going to have a look at Beijing Climate Centre, and that's going to take us into uh, July. We're going to have a 40-day look ahead uh, with the Beijing Climate Centre model. Now, I've already released a 5D forecast, so you can find the video to that here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit, and it's above the pollen count. There's also the written version, and you can get to that from the buttons at the top of the page here at Gazwovitz. Um, so it's going to be quite a warm five days coming up again. The warm spell continues, probably with an increasing risk of thundery showers or thunderstorms in the south, however. Um, and now we're going to extend out beyond the five-day uh, forecast period. Before we go on with that, though, just to uh, say a big thank you to our latest patrons. So we launched our Patreon page on Monday. Been an amazing response. We've had three more patrons pledging uh, donations to Gaz Um So I'm going to say big thank you to uh, our patron uh, Don Gibson, who has pledged some uh, money. Also, Bernard Hamill and uh, Shiram Pamu or Pamu. So big thank you to all three of those uh, patrons of Gazovids. If you would like to become a patron for Gazovids, um, you can just come to our Patreon page. I'm on it there uh, right now. All you have to do is um, either I'll leave the, the link in the description box at YouTube, so you just go through uh, the link. You might have to copy and paste it into your browser, but you can get to um, the Patreon page from the description box of Gazovids. Alternatively, we are linking to your Patreon page on all the pages at uh, Gazovitz, the website uh, now, and also I've shared this a couple of times on our Twitter and uh, Facebook pages as well. So big thank you to everybody for um, their donations, for becoming patrons of uh, Gazovitz. We are primarily ads funded at Gazovitz, both the website and the YouTube channel, and that will be remaining the case. It's just an added sort of extra uh, on top of the uh, advertising it costs ever increasing amounts of money to have the website in particular. The YouTube channel doesn't cost anything other than, uh, I suppose, time. But uh, the website does cost uh, a little bit of money and um, increasing amounts of money, actually, to um, keep the website going and to keep upgrading uh, the services. So um, big thank you to our uh, latest patrons and uh, any future patrons as well. Big thank you to you. You will have your name uh, read out and uh, given a shout out in the videos if you do uh, donate. So, uh, big thank you to everybody for becoming patrons of Gazwovitz. Right, let's get on with the video. We're going to start off with a look at the GFS Ensemble. We're going to Exeter, uh, home of the UK Met Office, I believe, um, today. So, the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for uh, Exeter, um, and we still remain in this prolonged warm spell of weather. So uh, that's where we are uh, right now, starting off at a warm uh, 10 Celsius, 850 HPA down in Exeter. Uh, I'm going to stay warm through to the weekend at the start of next week. That's this period uh, just here. Through the course of next week, we do see temperatures lowering. So uh, we talked about this a lot in the video just lately. Still on course for this cool down uh, through the course of next week and unsettled with that as well. And then as we go to the extended range, which kind of, kind of takes us into the second half of the month, this period just here, we are now seeing signs of temperatures beginning to warm up again, perhaps, starting to lift up. So a brief sort of mid-month cool down and change to unsettled weather. I mean, possibly starting to see signs of warmer conditions coming back into the second half of the month. But as rainfall is concerned, plenty of dry weather over the next couple of days. But by the end of the week and into the weekend, increasing amounts of precipitation. A lot of this is heavy showers and thunderstorms, which will be, be particularly affecting the south. So from kind of like the Midlands northwards, from northern England, northern Ireland, Scotland, there probably won't be as much uh, precipitation as this over the weekend and through the early part of next week. But down in the south, we have got some quite big precipitation spikes there, indicating the chance of maybe some heavy showers, possibly even some quite torrential thunderstorms breaking out during the early part of next week. After that, 
we uh, look like we're going to be quite unsettled around the middle part of the month. I mean, to the second half of the month, I think, we, again, as the temperature is beginning to lift up, we do see signs of a drying trend coming back. Bear in mind, that's in the extended range of the model and the ensemble, so it is unreliable. Um, so uncertainty about the second half of the month really but up to the middle of the month anyway it does look as though it's going to start to cool down a bit and also turn a little bit more unsettled service temperatures look like that for exeter bear in mind these do undercut the temperatures a bit but around or a bit above 20 degrees over the next few days and then into the weekend, particularly through to the start of next week, we find those temperatures lowering under uh, 20 degrees, going into the upper teens Celsius for a while, before maybe signs that they're beginning to lift back up again through the extended range. So that's the warm spell that's starting off with, that's the cooler interlude, and then that is possibly the warmer spell uh, coming up into the second half of the month. That, of course, quite speculative. Temperature anomalies look like that. So the 6th of June through to the 14th, coming out warmer than average for the UK and for Ireland. Most parts of Central and Northern Europe continue to be warmer than average. Well, it's been a very prolonged spell of warm weather that we've been in now, and it continues for the next week. Uh, actually, the highest temperature anomalies to average are across Central parts of Europe and down into the southeast of Europe as well, uh, also for some parts of Scandinavia. In the UK and Ivan were only around two degrees above average, but still running with that positive uh, anomaly in the next week. It looks very cool still over much of Russia, so it has turned a lot colder there in the past few weeks, and that continues as well. And also, unfortunately, Spain and Portugal uh, continue to have below average temperature anomalies there. Of course, it will still be quite hot um, in Spain because it is June, it's, it's summer, so it's getting their anomalies to average, so it's going to be hot, um, but certainly a bit cooler than average, and that's been the case for quite a few weeks as well now. Precipitation anomalies look like that. So much of the UK is coming out drier than average uh, in the week ahead from the 6th through to the 14th of June, especially central and northern parts of the British Isles. In the south, it's a bit wetter than average. Though. It's telling us there are thunderstorms threatening from the south. Notice much of France, Spain uh, coming out wetter than average. Again, a lot of that is going to be down to heavy showers and uh, thunderstorms as well. And uh, these showers and storms look like they're continuing through the Western Bowl of the Mediterranean, so if you're off to the um, sort of Corsica, Sardinia, or uh, the islands of Mallorca, Minorca, uh, and Ibiza, you may be in for some heavy showers and thunderstorms, which you wouldn't normally be expecting. Even down to North Africa, notice um, precipitation anomalies are above average there. That's Tunisia, I think. It looks like it's wetter than average there. So quite an unusual pattern you wouldn't normally be expecting. Uh, the precipitation on is through kind of like the Balearic Islands and uh, the costas of Spain to be above average and down into North Africa. You wouldn't expect that at this time of year. So it is quite unusual what's going on there. Uh, Northern Europe remains significantly drier than average. That includes most of the UK and Ireland and also Scandinavia as well. These eastern and southeastern parts of Europe, uh, again, coming out with slightly above average precipitation on is telling us there will be more showers and storms cracking off in the east and the southeast of Europe. So that's how the GFS is looking for Sunday. Remember, it's all covered by the five-day forecast up to uh, Monday. But essentially what's happening uh, over the weekend is that we've got a, still this ridge that's covering most parts of Europe, uh, a very sort of slack uh, ridge uh, there. We've got low pressure down into Biscay. That's taking the storms out of Spain into France and trying to push them up into the UK. Through to the early part of uh, next week, this is how we look with low pressure gradually taking over the pattern. So day by day through the weekend inside next week, the risk of showers and storms breaking out will increase. That's particularly so down in the south, less so up in the north. That's through to Wednesday next week, and then a change is beginning to take place. We're starting to change the weather pattern for the first time in a very long time. We begin to see low pressure starting to develop to the west of Scotland, which is beginning to turn a wind from that slack and very warm, humid, thundery, sultry 
a South Italy into a more typically fresh uh, Westerly. So the Westerlies are starting to at least try and come back through the middle part of next week. And actually, this run of the GFS model does break the Westerlies through properly. So look at that by Friday. 15th of June, uh, a week on Friday, the Wesleys have properly broken through. So we've returned to a much more typical uh, default type pattern to the UK, which is low pressure around here. Uh, uh, the jet stream is going through there and the high pressure it's still there, but it's pushed a bit further south. So the high pressure is now from the Azores into France and also parts of uh, Spain as well. That will start to dry out, particularly France, but also maybe Spain, Portugal and the Med. Uh, it will start to dry things out. The storm risk will begin to gradually ease away uh, as the rain begins to return to the north and the northwest of Europe. So that's a reversion to a much more typical type pattern that we expect across the Atlantic and uh, Europe. Takes us up to day 10 which is Saturday the 16th of June, still with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Notice already we're trying to build a ridge from the Azores High into southern parts of the country. So not long at all, actually, before a bit of a ridge is getting going across central parts of Europe uh, uh, from the extension of the Azores High. Low pressure remains out to the north and the northwest. So uh, we look like that is going to get extended range. Just trying to pull up some very hot air from southern parts of Europe on Wednesday the 20th of June. We're a long way out now of course but if it's low pressure uh, to west of Ireland it's unstable so that could be hot uh, hot temperatures followed by uh, violent thunderstorms uh, and then eventually the Atlantic is pushing through again that all looks much more typical of what we expect in a British and European summer that's far more uh, kind of like the pattern that you expect to see with low pressure uh, generally to the northwest of the UK, high pressure to the south of the UK, sometimes still ridging up, throwing up uh, ridges into west of Europe, at times even pulling up quite hot air from the south, but always with a threat of thunderstorms as a low pressure rolls back in from off the Atlantic and breaks it all down. Essentially, the old saying is a couple of fine days or three hot days and a thunderstorm. And that is the kind of pattern that we're seeing there as we go into the second half of June on that particular GFS run. This is how the ECMDF is looking. So uh, over the weekend to next week, it's gradually turning more unsettled from the south, still in that sort of slack and unstable southerly, southeasterly wind. Through the course of next week, we gradually begin to revert back to a more westerly type setup. It takes a while to do it, but by the end of next week, look at that. We've got both the GFS and the ECM agreeing that the westerlies are coming back. So temperatures would lower as a result because in summer, westerlies are always going to be cooler than uh, easterlies. It's the reverse, of course, in winter, Easterlies will be colder, much colder than Westerlies in the winter. But in the summer, Westerlies will actually be, be actually be the cool wind direction off the uh, Atlantic um, compared to Easterlies. So, as we get to day 10, the East End UF has reverted us back into a Westerlies. The Westerlies have returned. It's a return of Westerlies. And uh, we would expect showers or longer spells rain, particularly so to the north and the west with the south and southeast getting the driest weather. Again, notice we are trying to build a ridge up to the south and the southeast. So how long this westerly phase is going to last for, I think that is still uncertain. It's very possible that in the second half of June, we might start to bring the Azores ridge back and possibly even generate a little bit of hot weather. Uh, finally, the uh, Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies, so broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from today, the 6th, through to the 15th of June. With above average heights very, very close to the country, below average heights are down to the south and also up to the north as well. So the split jet continues. Some of the energy is going up there. Uh, some of the energy is going uh, down there as well. And essentially, we remain under that ridge as the anomaly uh, over the next 10 days. But do bear in mind it's transitional. So there is unsettled weather coming up, especially as we get through into next week. Then we go through to the next 10-day period. Uh, this is the 16th through to the 25th of June. 
And it suggests that any return of Wesley's is going to be quite short-lived because it still has an area of above-average heights very close to the country with the below-average heights remaining generally with the jet stream uh, to our north. So possibly doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow and with the jet as well. So... Um, it doesn't really show the westerlies and the unsettled weather ever coming back, actually, on uh, this model because it's a 10-day anomaly. So any return of the westerlies is only going on for a few days, and then it's quickly getting us back into high-pressure dominated weather. Then we go through to the next 10-day period, and that one takes us from the 26th of June through to the 5th of July, with still the idea of above-average heights very close to the country. It is turning perhaps a little bit more unsettled. The jet stream is getting a little bit uh, closer there. But overall, still quite warm, a reasonable amount of dry weather. And then the final 10-day period, um, days 31 to 40, which is the 6th through to the 15th of July, with above-average heights strengthening close to the country again, below average heights are down to the south and uh, the jet stream is still going through up there and this will be starting to pull in potentially some very hot air from the south and the southeast so the Beijing Climate Centre looks like it's trying to develop this into a continuation of a lot of dry and warm weather over the next uh, month and a bit and uh, I would have thought by the time you get through to July anyway we could well be looking at some really quite hot conditions indeed uh, for early July. So there is doubt about this return of Wesley's. I think it is going to get more unsettled through the middle part of the month. We've seen so much evidence for this now within the GFS and the ECMWF, but I think we will see the Westerlies coming back uh, next week, especially the second half of next week and through to the following weekend. I would expect some bouts of rain to head in from off the Atlantic and a cool down to take place as well. But quite how long it's going to go on for, I think that is still uncertain. And it's not at all impossible, but it might only be a few days before we get back certain to the Azores high starting to ridge again. Um, and even if it doesn't generate a big high pressure system over the UK, uh, it will probably be close enough at least to bring warm weather back, I think, in the second half of June. Um, and maybe even some quite hot weather and thundery weather as well. So, uh, so the second half of June still looks quite interesting. The summer forecast always pointed to the early part of summer being at the best of the summer, and then the deterioration takes place into July, and particularly through to August. And, uh, well, the first part of all of that is going OK, certainly with June uh, looking like it's going to be a pretty decent month, even with that um, slight uh, Atlantic interruption that we've got coming up for the middle of the month. Right, hope you found the video interesting and informative. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing your regular week to 10 day uh, look ahead. Don't forget, check out Friday Forecast if you haven't yet done so. And also check out Patreon page. And if you would like to uh, become a Gals of this uh, patron, uh, it talks you through everything that you have to do to uh, be able to do that. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.